So this is our agenda for today, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, we're going to discuss the infinity line, and we're going to talk about unconfirmed packages, withdrawal wallet addresses, blockchain transaction IDs. We're going to talk about support emails, the educational videos, and also policies and procedure. So again, I'd like to welcome everyone to the call. So glad you were able to join us on this Saturday morning. So we want to talk about the infinity line. I'm actually going to bring Coach Brian on, who's kind of who's going to kind of break this down and help us to, to really understand this a little better and conceptualize what the infinity line is about. We know many of you have had questions. So the first thing you need to understand, it's not magic, ladies and gentlemen, it is math. And Coach Brian, are you there, sir? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Welcome to the call. Awesome, man. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, again, I'm going to ask everybody uh, to, if you can, so this means if you're not driving, <laughs> I know people are driving, listen to this on the phone, uh, but if you can, um, grab out a piece of paper and, and a pen or a pencil. Um, I, I wish I, you know, we, we talked about this late, um, about having the ability for me to pop on here and um, maybe address some of the, the, the questions about the infinity line, uh, which I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually do something with you all today that I've done uh, with, with many groups of people here um, over the past couple of weeks um, who would just call up and say, I, I can't quite conceptually, I know this is a, a very uh, complex algorithm and it gets crazy when you get so many people involved, but it's something I've been able to do as a mental exercise with people and, it, and it's really worked out well for them. Um, and I hope it works out well for you too. And, and I hope also as we record this, you know, you can, you can just play this part back uh, to anybody in the future that's looking for uh, a, a deeper understanding of the infinity line, because you can start to understand it's a little trippy um, as we go through it. So um, hopefully that was enough, enough of a delay tactic for everybody to get a pen and piece of paper. Uh, because I don't want you to miss this, guys. And, and if you can't get a pen and piece of paper, you can always play this back time and time again, and it will start to make sense to you and settle in your mind. So let's just cover uh, a couple things. Number one is the infinity line is, is driven by an algorithm. And on its surface, the algorithm is very simple, right? Um, but as it starts to go into practice and you start dealing with lots and lots of people, as I'm going to show you, um, you know, it, it becomes almost impossible for you to figure out unless your brain is a supercomputer, which is okay because we have a supercomputer running it. Um, so the algorithm simply asks a couple of questions. It says, number one, who is at the front in what the algorithm calls the receiver position? That's it. Okay. So the person who's at the front is in the receiver position. No matter how long the line is or how short the line is, the person at the front is in the receiver position, which means as contributions are coming in, they're next in line now to be receiving contributions. That should make sense, right? So that's number one. Number two, who are the next two people, next two members who are in the send position? So the next two members uh, with, let's just say we're doing a $25 line with $25 contributions that have not sent forward a $25 contribution yet. So it's always looking for those keys. Who's in, in the receiver position? Who are the two in the send position? And then most of you know, if you've watched any of the presentations, any of the videos, if you've been in any trainings, all this kind of stuff, you know that somebody in the receiver position is going to receive two contributions. One's going to go to their wallet and one is going to loop them around back to the end of the line instantaneously with a brand new timestamp. OK, so that sounds uh, simple enough. And people think, well, it sounds simple enough, so I should be able to just figure it out real easy. Well, let me give you an example. And this is why I want you to have a, a paper and pen. Because I want you to just across the top of your paper, write down these five names. Okay. And what we're going to assume is that these are the first five people. I'm going to show you what would happen with the very first five people who would join the infinity line. The very first five. And then... We're going to start to imagine what happens as more and more people join. But if you can understand the dynamics just within the first five, you can understand the entire thing. So write down these names. And I'm just, these are just some random names. Um, first name is going to be Mike. Okay. I'm going to use some simple names here. Uh, second name will be Joe. Third name will be Linda. Fourth name will be Dave. Fifth name will be Kim. Okay. So Mike, Joe, Linda, Dave, Kim. And for those of you who are writing a little bit slower, I'll say it one more time. 
uh, Mike, Joe, Linda, Dave, Kim. And from this point on, you might just want to go MJLDK just so it can help you. That's okay. However you want to do it. Um, that's perfectly uh, good for you. But originally the names, I'm going to say it one last time. And you're going to see why I'm saying it so many times as we start getting into the algorithm here. Mike, Joe, Linda, Dave, Kim. Got it. Hopefully you guys got it. All right. So Mike, very first person who joins in the thing. Like, congratulations, Mike. You were fast. You were faster than everyone else. You got into the computer quick when we when we first uh, went into the paid pre-launch, and you were number one in the infinity line. That's awesome. Mike is the very first person. So we already said the rules, right? Who's at the front in the receiver position? I think we all know the answer to that question. It's Mike because he's the very first person in the line. Who are the next two at the send position? We don't. We don't. You know, we know who they're going to be, but they haven't joined technically yet because in this frozen time. Mike is the only one in at, right at this moment. And once the receiver gets gets the two contributions, they'll loop around to the back of the line with a, you know, a 25 tower contribution to be set forward. Okay, so now we have all the all the dynamics. So next person that joins is Joe. Could have joined a quarter of a second later, half a second later, a minute later, doesn't matter, right? But Joe comes in, okay? Joe is in one of the send positions, correct? Because Joe is coming in and he's the second person in hasn't sent his $25 forward yet, so it does go forward. Joe's $25, that contribution is going to go to Mike, okay, which makes sense. I think this is easy so far. We're going to have a little bit of fun with this here in a second when you, we start to bend your brain a little bit. Next person comes to comes in is Linda. Linda is the second person in the send position, right? So Linda's $25 contribution also goes to Mike doesn't go to Joe guys. Remember it goes to Mike. Mike is in the receive position. So it goes to Mike. Now, Mike now has gotten his two contributions. So Mike, $25 of that has gone to his wallet and the other $25 now is going to be used to loop Mike around right away to the end of the line. Now, if I asked most of you, and some of you have probably gone ahead, because every time I do this with people, they say, okay, I'm just going to go ahead. I see where he's going with that. If I asked you right now, where is Mike at now in the line that he's been looped around? Many of you will have looped him around back behind Kim because you know originally we said it's going to be Mike, Joe, Linda, Dave, Kim. And right away, you've already made a mistake about how the infinity line works. Because remember, at this exact moment in time, and this happens instantaneously, the only people who are actually in the line are Mike, Joe, and Linda. So Mike doesn't loop around back behind Kim. Mike now loops around back behind Linda. Hopefully, hopefully you guys caught that. So the new order of the line is now Joe, who's first now in the new receiver position, Linda and Mike. Okay, so the line has already been rearranged. It's Joe, Linda, Mike. Okay, and remember, now that Joe has already sent his $25 forward, remember? And Linda has already sent her $25 forward. What you end up with now is Mike is now in that first sender position because Mike is the only one so far who has $25 to send forward. So Mike's $25 goes to Joe, okay? You guys starting to see how it all, all of a sudden it starts to trip your brain up a little bit, okay? But Mike's 25 goes to Joe. And now that's it, right? Mike goes to Joe. And now we're waiting to see what happens next. And lo and behold, a quarter of a second later, Dave joins the infinity line. Dave is the second sender. So Dave's $25 contribution also goes to Joe. Okay. What happens now? Now Joe has received two contributions, one to his wallet. And now it's Joe's time to loop back around to the end of the line. Where does he loop at? He loops back behind Dave, not behind Kim because she's not here yet. He loops back behind Dave. So if you're writing this down, and I hope you are, so you can look at it later, the new order of the line is now Linda, Mike, Dave, Joe. Linda, Mike, Dave, Joe. Okay. Joe came back in at the end of the line. Linda is now at the front of the line. Remember, she's in a receiver position. And the next person who is set up to send, who hasn't sent yet, is Joe. Joe now sends forward his $25 contribution. It goes all the way to the next person to receive, which is Linda. So Linda has one contribution and we're waiting. And then Kim joins quarter of a second later, half a second later, a minute later, whatever. Kim joins the infinity line. K 
Kim's $25 goes all the way to the next person to receive. That's Linda. And now Linda has her second contribution. One's to her wallet. One is going to is going to loop her around. You guys are probably already catching on. Where does she loop at now? Finally, somebody's correctly looping back behind Kim. And what is the new order of the infinity line at this point? Mike, Dave, Joe, Kim, Linda. All right. And now Linda popped into the end of the line with $25 to go forward. Mike is now back in the receiver position at the front of the line. So Linda's $25 goes up to Mike. Mike has $25 as a contribution. And Mike is waiting now for his next for the next person to come into the infinity line for him to get his second contribution. And it goes all over again. So I, for those of you that are writing this down, I want you to think about this for a moment. We started off and we said, here's the order. The first five people, Mike, Joe, Linda, Dave, Kemp. Okay, that was the order. Mike, Joe, Linda, Dave, Kemp. But now the order is Mike, Dave, Joe, Kim, Linda. It's completely jumbled in a complete jumbled order now. But if you went through that exercise with me, it makes 100% perfect sense that that's how it should be ordered because it's not just people receiving their contributions and then they just drop off. It's receiving their contributions, instantly looping around, instantly looping around right? With a new timestamp, which means they're constantly jetting in between other people, which is how the algorithm actually works and how it's supposed to work. Think about this for a moment. That was five people. That was five people. So imagine you trying to figure that out in your head for 10 people or 20 or 50 or a hundred or a thousand or 10,000, right? The longer the line gets, right? the further you loop back when you finally do get your contribution. And now you're back, you're, you're back further and you're waiting for your turn to be in the receiver position again. So this is why we had people who at the very beginning are like, Hey man, I don't understand what's going on. You know, the infinity line started. I made hundreds of dollars very, very quickly, right? Because they were in very, very early. And they said, but now it seems like it's taking longer. You know, I was I was getting multiple loops a day, uh, but now, it, I, you know, it, it took me six days to get one. Is it stalled? Is it not? No, it's not stalled. It's not broken. The rules did not change. It's math. It is not magic. There's no magical twenty five dollar fairy just throwing twenty five dollars in because they feel like you've been waiting too long, guys. It's math. The longer the line gets, you're going to come out of the receiver position, loop back to the back of the line, and it will actually seem to take you longer to get to the receiver position until the momentum, the mass momentum matches the mass of people in the line, right? And we've been around for two weeks. I want to remind everybody, we've been around for two weeks. We've done very well in two weeks. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. But as the momentum picks up more and more and more, it starts to move faster and faster and faster so that even though the line is getting longer with more momentum, you can still maintain the frequency of the line because you have more momentum. Okay. And we're just getting started here, right? There's maybe 16,000 people, uh, members who have already joined the community paid. I'm not talking about from, you know, uh, free or whatever, just in the, in the first two weeks, about 16,000, right? You know, we'll probably probably end up about 50,000 by the end of the month. And then and, and we're really still just getting started. And then we'll start kicking into real momentum and there'll be hundreds of thousands. Right. And then there'll be millions. And the momentum will drive this line faster and faster and faster. But is it stalled? Is it broke? No. If you think about that exercise that I just did, and if you're writing this down, you guys are right with it. If you're not writing this down, it's probably like mind blown. Like, oh, my God. Like uh, that, I, I, I couldn't even follow that. Can you say it again? No, I'm not going to say it a bit again, but this is being recorded. So you can watch this as many times as you want. But you understand why it is that when somebody says, hey, I got in, um, you know, this is uh, my username is tired of waiting. And I got in, uh, you know, yesterday uh, at 104 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
I, I got to be number 13,450th to get in. I think I'm 13,450th to get in. Um, how long exactly is it going to take me to loop? You can understand that why when that comes into our customer service department, you're not getting a response to that, right? Who can figure that out, guys? I just showed you five people, and some of you right now, your your brain is mush already with five people. You you can't follow that five people. So imagine when you're trying to you, you're asking somebody to game theory thirteen thousand people, right? It's not possible to do that. That's why it's not run by people. This is run completely by an advanced level algorithm that does all these calculations. If it was run by people, it would be subject to mistakes, right? It would be doing it completely wrong. People would get confused. They say, I quit. I can't figure it out, right? It's run by an algorithm. And the algorithm is working perfectly, which is why, again, some people right away made hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Other people are like, well, it's not moving as fast as I want to. I've only looped around two or three times. And I thought that by now, you know, I would have looped around 20 or 30 times, right? Okay. And, and they're trying to figure that out. But here's what I want to tell you. The, the reality is this. This was developed for the little guy. This the, the infinity loop is a launch point, not a landing point. What does that mean? It means for if you if this is the best that you can do, and, and, and this is what we did it for. We said we wanted to give people the ability to enter into our community for the lowest possible level of resources. If that's it, so we didn't want to, you know, discriminate and say, oh, you, you have to be somebody who has five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin if you want to play with the big boys, right? We've seen so many other companies do that and communities do that. And we didn't like that. And we said, listen, we want to make it so that anybody who really is looking for a chance you know, to, to, to be able to do something and do something big, you know, some people can walk right in here and they can go right to the top. You know, they can say, I'm coming in. I got $187,000 worth of Bitcoin. I'm going to go all the way to the top crown ambassador day one. But that's not most people in the world. And we knew that. And we said, listen, some people for them to get together a $25 membership and $25 for the infinity line, that is the best that they can do. So if that's the best that you can do, then do it right? Then do it, get there. But that is a, is a launching point for you, not a landing point. If in your mind, you're thinking that, wow, I'm just going to get into the infinity line and all my troubles are over. I'm going to make thousands of dollars a day, just sitting back, hitting refresh on my screen. That is not what it was designed for. That's not how it works. And now you're not talking about math. You're talking about magic. The point of you getting in the infinity line, if that's the best you can do is twofold. Number one is it allows you to basically sit back and wait for your time to loop around a few times so you can develop enough additional resources through our crowdfund initiative and our rewards plan to get to higher levels. That should not be your idea if I'm going to get this and spend this and whatever, go buy a couple of coffee. That should be, hey, I'm going to use that to get to higher levels so I can get into the, the real significant part of the rewards plan so I can start achieving maximum leverage. But the other thing is, speaking of leverage, a lot of people seem to be forgetting. The moment you're in just the $25 infinity line, the 50% rule kicks in for you and already takes effect. What does that mean? If you know how our, how our rewards plan works, every single time from $75 or above that someone actually puts in a contribution, the company's going to take a $10 profit and promotion fee. And then it's split up 50, 50, 50 into the unit level, 50 into the matrix, right? And everything going to the unit level side is yours. It's yours with the exception of those third and 10th uh, packages, but it's yours. Those third and 10th are passives, but the rest is yours. That means that you could literally just come into the $25 infinity line, go out and talk to someone who has much higher level of resources than you. Maybe they can, they can, they have $10,000 that they're going to actually contribute to actually go up to those levels, maybe 50,000. It could be the 187,000 to go all the way up to the, you know, all the way up to the, the crown ambassador level. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Roughly 50% of that. So 50% minus the $10 fee, profit and promotion fees that we're taking, right? That's all yours. So at a $25 infinity line level, Somebody comes in that you actually talk to and you refer them. They actually see the program. They get it. They want to engage. 
They put in $187,000 either at once or over a period of weeks or months or whatever. 50% of it is yours in the global infinity line and with only $25 put in by you. You can't do that anywhere else in the world. You can't do that anywhere else. Everywhere else in the world says, hey, if you're not in position, you don't get it. Everyone else in the world says, hey, because you couldn't afford to play with the big boys, you don't get to actually earn like the big boys. So we're just going to give all of that to the big boys, even though it was your effort. That's everywhere else in the world. It's only here in this community, in Bitlocity, that we're not doing that, that we're allowing you to put yourself in position. So you understand how the algorithm works. You understand with just five people, when you look at where it ends up after just those five people going around, you understand that. It, again, it's completely out of order from where it started at, but it's working completely perfectly. And you understand it as it gets longer and longer and longer, right? You may have been in a received position before, but now it's going to take you a little bit longer to get back to the received position until the momentum catches up to the mass of the line. But then understand this too. You know, I talked to a friend of mine last night. I know he's probably on, and I, I, I would give you credit, but I don't, don't know if you want me to say your name, but I'm at least going to say, man, thanks for, thanks, thanks for this, D, because this is very helpful. It's a great way to think about this. He said, if you, if you just looped in the $25 infinity line, okay, it was $25 contribution for you. And if you just looped once per month for a year, that's it, once per month for a year, that would be $300 of complete passive contributions that you received for your one-time $25 contribution. $300. If you loop twice, it will be $600. If you loop, loop three times, and again, we're just dealing with the $25 line here. It's, it's more in the $50 line. If you loop three times in a $25 line, three times a month, it's $900. Let's put that in perspective for you. $25 to loop once a month for $300 return over the year, twice a month for $600 return, or three times a month for $900 return in contributions over a year. If you could find a bank account, I'm in, the, I'm in the United States, and I know that our bank, our, our savings accounts pay 1%, you know, 0.5%. But if you could find a bank account that was paying 3% interest to you, 3% interest, a bank account right now, if you could find that, which you probably can't, but if you could, for you to actually get $300 in one year, you'd have to have $10,000 sitting in that bank account. For you to get $600 in one year, you have to have $20,000 sitting in that bank account. And for you to get $900 in one year, you have to have $30,000 that you do not touch, never make a withdrawal from, sitting in that bank account for one year straight. Or you can come to our community, $25 into an infinity line, and sit back and loop once or twice or three times per month and do the same that you would have to do with 10, 20 or $30,000 of real cash sitting in a bank account that you couldn't touch. There is no comparison here to what we're offering to what you can get anywhere else on the planet. And yet, and still people are, I want to go, I want to get, I, I want to go. I want to see, I, I thought I was going to make a thousand dollars a day in infinity line. I understand that. I also understand this. If you understand what we just went through, if you understand now the algorithm, how it works. You understand just how, again, with just five people, how you, it's hard to wrap your brain around. So you can almost understand what happens when there's 10, when there's 50, when there's 100, when there's 1,000, when there's 10,000, right? And then you say, well, why, when you guys are doing the presentation, you know, why aren't you presenting it exactly like that? Imagine if we presented it exactly like that. Imagine if we had, we bet we definitely have to spend six hours on the presentation just talking about the infinity line. So we're simply trying to give you a concept of what the infinity line is about. It's a global bill. You get the benefit from the efforts of every single member of Bitlocity in the entire world, whether you personally referred them or not. You get to get into a position to be able to go out there. And again, it's a launching point, not a, la not a landing point. Your goal should not be to get into the infinity line and just relax. If you really want to contribute to the community and benefit from the community, your goal is always forward motion. It's always more leverage, more knowledge, et cetera. Those are going to go together. Those are going to put you in a position to really be able to build and really be able to accelerate yourself to the speed of success. That's your goal. Launching point, not a landing point, if you understand that. But if you get what I just said, you understand why the infinity line is the best thing on the planet. 
you understand who it was built for, who it was designed for, and you understand that, again, if you can go further than the infinity line from day one, you should, you almost must, okay? It is interesting to me that we have people who are coming on Facebook and saying something's wrong with the infinity line, it's not working now. What I do find at least refreshing is a person will come on a day later or two days later and say, my bad, I said the infinity line wasn't working. Uh, I just got I just got an infinity line payment. They must have fixed it, right? And it's not fixed. It's not. It was never broke. It's just doing exactly what it's supposed to do. But I also find it interesting that while we have people saying, you know, complaining about they haven't gotten a twenty five dollar infinity line payment yet, we have other people sending out messages saying, you know, this week I I made more from the crowdfund initiative this week than I earned at my full time job all of last year in one week. Not just one week, the first week where when you are in a pre-launch, it's always choppy. There's always some issues to resolve. There's user errors. There's there's things that people don't understand. But in that first week, you got people saying they earned more in one week than they earned all of last year. You got tons of people saying they got more through the crowdfunding initiative in that one week, you know, than they got from their full-time job, you know, two or for two or three months of working 40, 50, 60 hours a week plus traffic going back and forth. This is the best initiative that's ever been created, and it's just gotten started. The masses haven't gotten here yet. Every single person that's on this webinar right now, watching it live or watching it recorded, that's being broadcasted on YouTube, et cetera, you are here before the masses. Some of you are like, I wish I was first in the infinity line. You are first. You are here before the masses because the masses are coming, okay? That's all we hear every single day is all of these big leaders and other companies that are quietly getting their teams ready to move in mass over to Bitlocity. Now that Bitlocity has opened the doors. You are here before the masses. We've been here two weeks, two weeks and two weeks only. So I'm telling you guys right now, again, think about what I said. If anybody has any questions, play this back for them. Let them hear it. Let them try to write those five names out. Mike, Joe, Linda, Dave, Kim, and see how it ends up as Mike, Dave, Joe, Kim, and Linda, and they can't, they can't figure out how. Let them do that, and let them walk through that exercise to get the idea of what's going on. And be a little patient, because as this momentum kicks in, you're going to be very, very happy that you're here. And again, even just being in a $25 infinity line, start talking to some people with better resources than you, and you're going to be very, very happy about that 50% rule that we have in place that's going to allow you to be able to really benefit from our rewards plan faster so you can accelerate yourself faster and you can start making more of an impact for yourself, for your family, and for your community. So, sir, I'm going to turn it back to you. Hopefully that helped people. They were able to write it down, but even if they weren't, they can watch this video time and time again, and I think it's going to clarify for them a lot. All right. Well, awesome. Th- thank you so much, Coach Brian. Really, really appreciate that uh, that breakdown, man. That was awesome. So we've got also uh, Coach Solomon on the line now. Coach Solomon has a computer engineering background, and he has a few thoughts about about some things. I want to bring him on also as well. And uh, Coach Solomon, are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I am. All right. Well, w- welcome to the call. Now, I know you have, you know, your view of, you know, everything that's happening with Velocity. And uh, what did you want to share with us this morning? Uh, so just to, to give uh, everybody on the call an idea of where you are and what you can expect and what I've seen over the last 25 years of doing this. Over the last 25 years, I've owned two MLM companies, worked in the field, built organizations, worked at corporate. But for the last 15 years, uh, I've been providing software to the MLM space. And in that time period, I bet you I have launched over a thousand companies. That being said, there's always that learning curve. There's always um, those little things that come up that uh, have to be fixed that were not anticipated. But one thing that I can definitely tell you is over that period, very, 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 very seldom do you ever see anything go off without a hitch. That being said, you have to understand that you're in this thing at the very beginning. And when I say the very beginning, I do mean the very beginning. This is the part where everybody always wants to, once something becomes successful and becomes uh, running like clockwork, everybody always wants to say, well, man, you guys are lucky. 
um, you know, you got in at the very beginning and, you know, you're there now. Well, what they don't see is everything that the company has gone through to get to where they're at. So just be patient, understand where you're at, understand the opportunity that is in front of you. Tell everybody that you know about <clears throat> bitlocity, people that you care about, people that you want to benefit, let them know about bitlocity. There will be some ups and downs. That is perfectly normal. There are gonna be some glitches. That is perfectly normal. There's gonna be some things that don't work right. Perfectly normal in a pre-launch phase. There are a lot of things because the way bitlocity is set up, the bitlocity is really kind of figuring out a few things as we move along because <clears throat> some things you just cannot anticipate. Perfectly normal, absolutely normal. So you should be excited about it. You should be excited about where you're at. You should understand that <clears throat> there are gonna be a couple of ups and downs, but you will ride these things through. And if you're in at the very beginning of this thing, which everybody on this phone uh, call is right now, understand where you're at. It is not always smooth at the beginning, but at the end, when everything's worked out and Bitlocity actually launches and that momentum picks up, you will be extremely happy that you are in now and everything that you might think is not working, which is actually working properly, uh, you will be viewing that in your rear view and you will be extremely happy and happy that you're here. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Coach Solomon. Look forward to having you on future trainings as well. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So let's continue on. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is move on to the next topic today, and that is unconfirmed packages. So many of you know that hundreds and hundreds of unconfirmed packages have been confirmed as of this point. And if you have a package that uh, you've paid for and it's not showing as active in your back office, you know you need to send a support email. We're going to review exactly what you need to say in that support email here in just a few moments. But uh, many of our members can tell you that those individuals that didn't have their packages confirmed, they can tell you their packages are confirmed now because the developers and the programmers have been working nonstop and will continue to do so. Also, we wanna talk about withdrawal wallet addresses. So again, everyone needs to know that once you make a withdrawal, ladies and gentlemen, that cannot be reversed. They are irreversible, right? So you need to confirm your withdrawal wallet address before you actually make that withdrawal. You wanna double check that, that's very important. Once that money is withdrawn to that wallet address that you provided, ladies and gentlemen, no one can change that. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the blockchain transaction ID. Uh, you know, when you are sending in a support, support email, it's important that you provide screenshots and as much information as you possibly can, including the transaction ID. This is a 64 character uh, code, ladies and gentlemen, that anyone can click on and to get a verification that that fund, that those funds were actually sent. We're going to show you how to find that transaction ID. <coughs> of course, we're also talking about support emails and the details that you need to include. So for example, if you happen to have unconfirmed packages, you want to use the subject unconfirmed package. And you want to include, of course, your username, screenshots of the payments that you have made, and perhaps even screenshots of your back office. Next, if you have sent in multiple payments, maybe the $25 admin fee, the system wasn't moving fast enough or you didn't understand what was going on and you made multiple payments, you can send in an email. You want to subject uh, title that as multiple payments. And again, you want to include screenshots, which will include the blockchain transaction ID, which is that 64 character code, which lets uh, the developers know exactly uh, when that money was sent and when it was received. All right. Of course, you want to include your username as well. Okay. Uh, let's say, for example, you are having an issue where you can't log into your back office. Most of these issues have been resolved already. But if you're having that issue, then you simply would title that email as can't log in and provide 
your login um, provides your details, including your uh, username. Okay, so we don't need your password. We just need your username. All right, next, uh, maybe you need to change your wallet address. You, you can send an email in for that as well and provide uh, details so that uh, your identity can be verified. Now, a lot of work is being done in the website, as you know, and in the back office right now. And that work is actually uh, its priority. And as soon as that work is completed, educational videos will be uploaded in your back office. It can happen any day now. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. But uh, as we conclude these other things, which are a priority right now, once they are done, then the educational videos will be, will be released. So don't stress about th those things, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, don't stress about any of this. We are doing something extremely positive. We are absolutely going in the right direction. And so you certainly don't want to uh, stress about that. Okay. Again, it's important that you read the policy and procedures in detail. You can find them in your back office. You can go to bitlocity.io. You can read those as well. A lot of work has gone into creating those policies and procedures so that we can stay compliant in every aspect. And so be sure that you read those, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to help you understand Bitlocity even more. Okay. So now I want to just review common errors. You know, in the very beginning, most of the challenges that people have had have been because of common errors. So the first thing is not sending the correct amount of Bitcoin. Of course, when you go in and you want to pay the admin fee or you want to purchase a package, ladies and gentlemen, the system's going to tell you exactly how much Bitcoin you need to send. You want to send that exact amount. Some people are, you know, changing the value. So that Bitcoin, a US value that the Bitlocity is providing you, it might say $24.95. Some people are actually going in and changing it and making the US value $25, not realizing that they are screwing up the system. You wanna send the exact amount of Bitcoin, don't worry about the USD value, all right? Some people are sending more Bitcoin than is requested. And so one of the things you need to do is when you send money out of your wallet, you want to make sure that the amount of Bitcoin that's going to Bitlocity is the exact amount that's requested. And you want to make sure that your wallet is not deducting the transaction fee from that amount that Bitlocity is requesting. So that means you need to look at it very carefully to make sure that is not happening. Of course, you can all, always copy the amount of Bitcoin by clicking on the clipboard button. Sometimes that can help you as well. The next thing you need to know, which is very important, as soon as you have sent that payment, you want to click verify and activate my package. You don't have to wait for confirmations or anything like that. As soon as that payment has been sent, make sure you click verify and activate my package. That lets the system know that that Bitcoin is on the way. All right. All right. So some people are uh, a bit impatient and not recognizing that there is a confirmation that has to go through the blockchain. You know, when, when cryptocurrency or Bitcoin is sent through the blockchain, it has to be confirmed by many computers. And in order for the system to recognize that payment, it has to have at least one confirmation moving forward. Okay, now many of us are using blockchain.com, the app, and we will scan the QR code that Bitlocity provides us, but you will get an error message. It will say, this is an invalid uh, wallet address. Okay, well, the wallet address absolutely is valid. It's just that the QR code is not copying it correctly. That means that what you can do is you can copy and paste the wallet address in the uh, into the app. You can do that, or you can go to blockchain.com on your computer and you can copy and paste the wallet address and you can send it that way as well. So hopefully you caught that. And again, as we mentioned earlier, when sending support emails, please include screenshots, as much information as you can. Of course, your username as well and that transaction ID. All right, so these are the common user errors. You know, a great practice, ladies and gentlemen, is to, when you refer someone into the program, is to walk them through the joining process. It doesn't take that long. And in, in the process of you doing that, you will actually be training them so that they will be prepared to do the same for the people that they introduce to our community. Hey, All sir, right. can, I, 
Can I comment mm -hmm. on that last thing one, one second? Yes. I, I just wanted to just make sure I kind of inject this right then at that moment. The other thing I, I did want to say is we, we just increased the size of our support staff in, in customer service. So when you're sending in those emails that you just talked about, yeah, we, we definitely want them done properly. It's easier to address them, log them, catalog them, et cetera. Um, but also because we enhanced that support staff, and this has literally just happened um, over the last day or so, you're going to start to see a faster response uh, to, the, to the emails that you're sending in. So a combination of um, sending it in uh, correctly so we can identify them faster and we can put them into the right category, get them to the right, uh, the right area of concern with, with that enhanced staff is going to change around a lot of the response times as well. Um, so again, as we grow, uh, you know, out, out with the membership, we're going to continue to grow uh, behind the scenes as well to make sure we're providing the support that's necessary. So thanks for letting me speak. Just wanted to get that in there. All right. Thank you so much. And also, we do have support on uh, the Zoom right now. So if you're having certain questions, support is actually answering a bunch of those questions right now as we progress with the training. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, blockchain.com. Blockchain.com is actually one of the oldest wallets out there, ladies and gentlemen. It is very solid. Uh, not only do they provide, you know, multiple wallets uh, within their system, they also provide education as well. So you might want to take time to kind of scroll through your blockchain.com back office. But once you set up that wallet, remember we talked about this once before, not your keys, not your coins. In your blockchain account, you have access to your private keys. That means you actually own the money. If you're using a wallet such as Coinbase, for example, or Cash App, you don't have the private keys. That means you don't own the money. They do. So that is not a wallet that you want to use in order to receive. That is not the best practice. Let's put it like this. That is not the best practice in maintaining custodianship or ownership over your Bitcoin. Those two wallets are not the best practice. The best practice is a wallet where you have access to your private keys, all right? Or your recovery phrase. OK, so this is something that you have to understand when you start dealing with cryptocurrency. All right. So, you know, you can kind of equate it to the bank a little bit. Have you ever gone to your ATM and put your machine in and maybe the money didn't come out or maybe it, it just stole your card and kept your card and it didn't provide you with the money? All right. These things happen from time to time. Well, what that is telling you is this, ladies and gentlemen, that money although you think it's yours, is really not. It's actually the banks. And the banks have to allow you to be able to get that money. So when you have a wallet such as Cash App and Coinbase, that's like dealing with the bank. They have that money and you have to ask them to release it to you. But if you have your wallet where you have the private keys, now you control the money. This is what we're talking about. Custodianship, complete ownership and control over your money. That's why you want what's known as a decentralized wallet. And that happens when you have access to the private keys or the recovery phrase, okay? So if you're using blockchain.com, of course, you're going to go to that particular website. You are going to sign up and register for an account. So here's the thing, a security feature, you wanna make sure you always check the URL and make sure the URL on the website address is correct because there are a lot of phishing sites out there and you don't want to get caught up in any of those. Okay, so if you're opening up this account for the first time, you're going to click on get started. It's going to provide you with a wallet ID. This wallet ID is only for the purpose of you logging into the account. This is not a Bitcoin wallet address. This is just an address to enable you to log into your blockchain.com account. So you want to save this, and this will normally go in your emails. It'll be uh, under a welcome email from blockchain. This is where you will find that, but you certainly want to write this down because you're going to need this every time you get ready to log in to your blockchain.com wallet. Okay, so again, this wallet ID is not your Bitcoin wallet address where you're going to send your Bitcoin. This is just your ID to log in to your account. It's sort of like a username. OK, so you go here and you go ahead uh, and put in your password in here. It's going to take you to your back office. This is your blockchain.com back office. The first thing you want to do here is get your private keys so you can have control over this account. You're going to click on the word security in the upper right hand corner. All right. That's going to take you right here. And you're going to look for this backup phrase, ladies and gentlemen. 
you want to click on where it says backup phrase down there at the bottom, and it's going to provide you with a series of words that you need to write down and put in a safe place. You don't want to take a screenshot of it. You don't want to email it to yourself. Because if someone is able to hack into your email, they can get those words and they can steal your money. If you take a screenshot of it on your phone and someone gets your phone, they get a hold of those words, they can steal your money. So you have to remember, there is no password reset. There is no customer support here. It's you having complete control over your money. That means you have to have a level of responsibility when it comes to dealing with this. All right, so you want to write these things down, put them in a safe place, maybe put them in a safe in your house. You want to use ink, you know, not, not pencil, so it'll erase or disappear, okay? So you want to be very smart about this. So you click on uh, backup phrase, it will provide you with that phrase. You want to make sure you write that down and store it in a safe place. So if something should happen to your computer, you can still access your money because you have that phrase. If something should happen to your smartphone, you can still access your money because you have those 12 words. All right, now, <clears throat> once you have that account uh, set up, the thing you need to do, you need to be able to get your Bitcoin wallet address. This is where you're going to send your earnings or your donations that you're going to be receiving from Bitlocity. So you click on Bitcoin, or you can click the word request at the top there. When you do that, it's going to pull up your Bitcoin wallet address. You see that right there? You can click on that square, that's the clipboard, and that will enable you to copy that address, and you can provide that to Bitlocity and put that in your back office so you can receive your contributions from Bitlocity. All right, you notice this number happens to start with a number one. Okay, now the other thing that you can do to speed your transactions is you can change the network fee. Now, the thing you don't want to do, you never want to make the network fee less than what they're providing for you. Because if you do that, that transaction is going to slow down tremendously. It might even time out. In other words, it won't go through at all. So you want to pay the fee that they are providing you here. You can do the regular fee or you can do the priority free fee, which is going to be a little more, but it's going to send the funds through the blockchain faster. So whenever I'm dealing with Bitcoin, I personally always use priority because I want it to go through as fast as possible. The other thing you want to consider is the time of day that you're actually doing your transactions. Sometime the, the blockchain is more busy versus other times, like on the weekend, you know, at night, um, things like that uh, will, be, will be slower times and it's a better time to get your transaction to go through faster. All right, very good. And so you can see where it says two, that's where you're gonna put your Bitcoin wallet address that you're sending the money to, where it says Bitcoin, that's where you're going to, where it says BTC, that's where you're gonna type in the exact amount of Bitcoin that you want to send. Very good, excellent. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to show you here is how do you get a hold of your transaction ID? Okay, so once you have made a transaction, you will see it will show up in this, uh, in your back office here of your, of your um, blockchain.com. And you see right there in this specific, specific case, this account received some Bitcoin, $10 worth of Bitcoin. But to see that transaction ID, I want to click on that entry. It's going to take me to this page. And in the right-hand corner over there near the bottom, you see it says status. And there's a little square with an arrow going through that square. You want to click on that square. That's going to take you to the detailed page, ladies and gentlemen. And this is where you can see your transaction ID. It's called the transaction hash is the technical term. And it is 64 characters. See how long it is? And so when you are sending in your screenshots to Velocity because you made a payment, um, uh, you made an extra payment for anything, this is the transaction ID that you need to provide them with. And so there's a little clipboard there. You can copy that because anyone can go and put this in and they can actually search this and it will prove that that payment was sent. Okay, so that is your transaction ID. That's what you need to know. I hope that helps you out, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so now we've got our getting started training tutorial, which is in the process of being updated right now. 
Uh, if anyone is interested in joining the program, they can go to GetStartedTraining.com to watch that video. So it will be updated. Uh, I should have that uploaded uh, this weekend. And, uh, and we're going to have a series of videos that will also be in your mobile app as well. And we're just going to break things down two and three minute videos. You may have heard Joel talk about that. So a person can go direct to the Pacific video that they have a question, an area that they have a question about and watch a two or three minute video. We're working on these things. And so this is a process, you know, it's a work in progress, ladies and gentlemen, and we are getting there and improving every single day. So listen, we're very excited about being in partnership with all of you, ladies and gentlemen. We're excited about the direction that we are going in. You know what? We've got a, a ton of tremendous testimonies now. It's, it's, you know, you, I don't know how many of you know what is going on in Bitlocity. And I don't know who you're listening to, but Velocity is doing extremely well. A lot of people are doing very, very well, and we are just getting started. So I hope this training has been helpful for everyone. I'd like to thank Coach Brian for helping out today and also Coach Solomon. You're going to be hearing many other trainers on these calls as we move forward. We've got a very talented team uh, on the advisory panel and other members of our community. You'll be hearing from them and from the uh, different uh, levels of expertise that they'll be bringing on board as we continue to move forward. So thank you so much for joining us. Everyone have an awesome day. Of course, we'll be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our program overview. Be sure to invite your guests and your team members. Thank you for joining us. Everyone have an awesome weekend. God bless.